بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين هو الذي جعلنا مسلمين الله سبحانه وتعالى يعيب all human beings a choice and it's not very complicated but it is something that requires a lot of follow up you have to make the choice in fact some people when it becomes clear to them they will absolutely deny it, lie about it, and say, no, that's not real, because I don't want to accept that. And this is, more and more we see the psychiatrists, the psychologists, counselors, they tell us that when somebody doesn't want to accept it, something, whatever it is, they will block it. They will block it in the mind. They will be in denial. And that's what Allah talks about in the Quran, isn't it? There are some people, no matter what you say to them, no matter how you present it, la yu'minun. Allah said that in the very beginning of Surah Baqarah. Whether you warn them or warn them not, it doesn't matter because they ain't going to believe. Let me explain something for my own benefit, really. But... The word kafir, when we see it in the Quran, the word kafir doesn't really translate properly as a disbeliever as much as it means somebody that's a liar. Let me explain why. Like this microphone that's giving me a hard time, right? Now, I can just say there's no microphone there, but then you'd say, well, look at it. Well, if I do this, now I can't see it anymore, right? But it's still there, isn't it? The microphone is still there? Oh, yeah. Oh, but I won't look at it. I'll do what? What am I doing? What is this called when you do this? Cover. Is that called cover? That word cover in English actually comes from the Arabic word kafara. What does kafara mean? To cover. It's the exact same word, isn't it? Kafara, cover. So, at the time of Rasul Sallallahu they don't say it anymore for obvious reasons, but at the time of Rasul Sallallahu anybody that was a farmer was a kafir. A farmer was a kafir. What? No, it's not about his belief at all. He digs the ground, he puts the seeds in the ground, then what does he do? He covers them with the dirt. And that is what they call them. These are the kofar, the farmers. That's where it comes from. So now we get a different idea. If, I, if you're saying that he's covering it, it means he knows those seeds are there. He planted them. He knows they're there. So somebody who is a kafir, is somebody who knows, but he chooses to deny and covers it. Got it? What does it mean? It solves a big problem when people ask you the question, well, what about somebody that never heard the message? Mm -hmm. What about somebody who doesn't know, is God going to throw him at the hellfire? You've heard these questions, right? But see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will make it known to people in different ways. That's his job, not my job. All I need to do is try to, my best to tell people what's Islam and then walk away. It's, it's not my job to guide them. So now we understand. There's also a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that says that on the Day of Judgment, if there's anybody who never got the message, never heard it, then Allah will ask them, who am I? They'll say, you're, you're Allah. Okay. Well, <laughs> at that stage, that, that's pretty easy. And then, will you obey? Yes, of course. You'll obey? Yeah. Anything? Yeah. Mm, sure. Then Allah will say, then jump in this fire. And if they do it, they'll find that it's not a fire, it's Jannah. But if they don't, that means they disobeyed. That means they would have lied. They would have done the same thing in this life, and they'll go to the hellfire. What's the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? 
poor translation on my side, but anyway, you get the idea. There are many words in the Quran that if you understand them from the Arabic point of view, a lot of things get more clear to you. For instance, we're all here today for what? what are, what's the purpose that we gathered here right now for this? This is called what? Salah, right? How many of you would, you don't raise your hand, it's Juma, but just think. How many of you, if you were telling anybody, you'd say, I'm going for prayers? Huh? I'm going to pray, right? Pray Juma, right? Salah, pray. Pray Salah, right? Wrong. Because somebody used that term a long time ago, it looks like all the translators just follow suit. They don't bother to find out what is it really that you're doing. Let me explain something to you. Pray means that you actually are asking somebody, begging them, please let me have this or remove this difficulty from me. And what do you call that in Arabic? When somebody is pleading and, and asking, and it's not called salah, it's called what? Dua, right? You're calling on somebody to help you. That's dua. And da'wah is from the same root, to call. So you're not praying. You pray in the salah. We make dua and salah, right? What is salah? You'd be shocked. I was shocked anyway to find out it's related to sila. Sila is connection. It's a communication connection, kind of like this microphone that didn't want to make one. Yes. That's salah. You are communicating, making a connection between you and your Lord. Now, when you think of that, don't you get more excited about it? You've got something nobody else has got, a direct connect. Huh? I mean, you've got the main number. No battery needed. Don't worry about the minutes. Not going to go dead. All you've got to do is make wudu. And then face the Qibla. And when you go like this, Connection made until you. Salam alaikum wa Salam alaikum wa Connection finished. And all that time you were communicating. This is why it's so important to have khushu' in the salah. Could you imagine calling somebody up on the phone? They go, hello, and you go, mm. hello. Hello. Mm. Hello, hello, is anybody there? Mm. Mm. You get the idea? This is what we do sometimes in Salah. We lose our focus and our attention. You have a connection with the creator of the universe and you blow it. Wow. But once you realize it, then you don't have that problem again, right? You'll think about it next time. This is not just prayer. This is my salah with Allah. Maybe you don't know this, but some of you, I think you do. When the order of salah came, the believers got excited. They were happy. They were not upset. They didn't say, oh man, I got to pray. Well, they didn't say that. They were happy for the same connection that Rasul Islam and all the prophets before have this connection. And now Muslims have it. All of us have this thing, this direct connect, Salah. Shouldn't we be excited? Shouldn't we be happy? So many things that if we just know the roots of these words, understand, sit with the shiuk. I did. A lot of them actually. But don't blame them for my mistakes, okay? <laughs> what I'm saying to you is that, sadly, we have people reciting the Quran that don't even know what it means. In America, we have a contest every year, and the children call me up on the phone, and they recite the Quran on our television channel, Guide Us TV. They'll call up, and they recite. It was this year, every year we give a prize, you know, and every year so many make their videos, put them up. But this year I started asking the children, do you know what it means? I thought they would say, yeah, it means this or that, and they go, no. 
And we got 39 million people watching our channel, right? <laughs> and a lot of them are not Muslim. I'm like, ugh. And the next one, I said, okay, ask this little boy, you know, this little girl, that one, this one. In the last three weeks of broadcasting, every single child couldn't tell me the contents of the surahs that they were reciting. And one of them tried to tell me, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, because they recited Fatiha. So I said, what does that mean? They said, what? I said, what does Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen? Oh, I know. I said, good. It means in the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful. I said, no, that was Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Oh, then I don't know. Some of the children, this will scare you, some of the children are memorizing the entire Quran with no understanding at all. I was just in Tennessee two days before I got here. The night before I left to come here, I was in Tennessee. And the last thing that happened was a very beautiful voice, this one child, 12 years old, had the most beautiful voice. It sounded like you're listening to the Arabs themselves reciting. And he was leading Taraway. 12 years old, he was leading Taraway. So I brought him on the air because we were doing live broadcast from there. I brought him on the air, brought him up beside me, and his name, I think, Omar. I said, Omar? Let's talk about the Quran, let's talk about the meanings. Memorize the whole Quran. He said, I don't know any of it. I don't know what it means. I said, okay, this has got to stop. This has to stop. We have to make some effort. What is it to recite the Quran and you don't know what it means? Honestly, I want you to think about what does that mean. Isn't it true that we always want the one with the most Quran to lead the Salah? Isn't that true? Isn't it? Yeah. But did you think it meant reciting or did you think it meant knowledge of what it meant? Go back and read the Hadith. The companions themselves said we used to not memorize any more than we could know the meaning of. It means you have to have the knowledge of it. And listen to the famous Hadith of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best of you are those who memorize the Quran and teach other people to memorize it? That's not what it says. Some people translate it that way, but that's not what it says. It uses the word ilm, which is knowledge. The best of you are who have knowledge of the Quran and you share that knowledge with others. To lead the Salah is a very big thing. Imagine, imagine someone leading the Salah who doesn't have clue one of what they're reciting. Shall I tell you what it is? It's an empty box. Imagine a beautiful box, huh? Very nice looking, wrapping, has a ribbon around it, a nice bow on the top of it. Wow, and it's big. It's a beautiful big box. Somebody handed it to you like, oh, wow, look what I got. And nothing in it at all. Nothing. Nothing in it. What will you do? You feel like you got cheated. Some people will say, oh, you get recited reward for reciting. You know, Alif, Lam, Mim is not one word. Alif is uh, a value and a harf. And Lam is a harf and Mim is a harf and you're going to get reward. Ha! Huh? But what kind, of, what kind of reward are you going to have? If you don't know the meaning, what happens? you'll have doubts. You'll begin to argue with things. You'll begin to make up your own religion in your head. You'll say, well, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't need a beard. It doesn't say in the Quran I have to have a beard, right? 
Does it say in the Quran you have to have a beard? No, I don't have to have a beard, right? Did you ever read the Quran in the Arabic language and do you know what it says? To obey the Rasul is to obey Allah. And he ordered us to leave our beards alone. He didn't say grow it, because not everybody can grow one. But he ordered us to leave it alone. The vast majority of the Muslims today don't know what's in the book. By the way, I'm not pushing for beards. I'm just giving you an example. Just giving you an example. Think about it. May Allah help us. Allah guide us. Allah keep us on the Surat Mustaqim. Ameen. One of the things that we're doing right now in the States, we have about 22,000 translations only, no Arabic in it, translation only. And I'm sending them out to these kids. I'm sending them out to the new Muslims, the non-Muslims, and I started sending them out to these kids that call in because at least they got a chance to try to get the meaning. And I highly suggest for anybody in this room, anybody listen to me in the future, please, Get a translation of the meaning and understand what it is you're reciting. I want you to memorize the Quran in Arabic, but memorizing what? The sound only of a language you don't know. Some of you, and you've heard about this, some, some of you know this. We've had some of our youth, our young people, even some adults leaving Islam because of doubts. They start getting questions. They go on the internet, Facebook, and places like this and see crazy stuff. And they have absolutely nothing to fight back with because they don't know Islam. And by the way, if you don't mind me to tell you this, the internet is not the place to go to learn Islam. Sorry, but that's not the place. We do have a couple of universities online, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about don't go to Facebook, don't go to Google, YouTube, and try to argue with people about stuff. You'll just get, make a bigger problem for everybody. The real way is the same way they did it 1,400 years ago. You sit with the people of knowledge, and Allah said that in the Quran too. If you don't know, ask the people that know. And that doesn't mean Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Google. It means the shiuk, the imams. And go and sit and listen and learn. What I'm saying to you, I'm saying to myself at the same time, if we don't take the time to know the meanings, what do we really have from our religion? And this is the month. Shaitan is tied up. He's not dead, by the way. He's not dead. He's still, he, he still got some leeway here, but use this time as much as you can to read, understand, and implement what Allah is telling us. It's not a book of sounds. It's a book of guidance. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us and keep us on the straight path.